Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today's video is going to be about my backpacking trip to Asia. Um, now this is going to be part one of a two part video um, because I spent two months traveling. So I don't think I'll be able to fit all into one. I will talk too much and there's too many cool things I've done to fit into one video. So um, hi everyone. So it's Sunday morning. That's why I look like this. I needed to add this in just quickly because I have just said that this is going to be a part one of a part two video, which it is not. Um, I have drastically underestimated how long um, these videos will last. So um, I'm like halfway through like the Philippines journey and it's already like over 20 minutes long. So it's actually going this one's going to be a proper series and it's going to last a while this is going to probably end up being part one of four i would imagine roughly going off the fact that i'm like halfway through the philippines and it's taking about 20 minutes ish um so by the time i do the second half kuala lumpur and then indonesia as well indonesia will probably have to be in two bits and kuala lumpur will maybe just get squeezed in to the end of the philippines to the start of indonesia depending on how long they take so Yes, um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be jumpy and I fil um, I filmed all of the Philippines and Kuala Lumpur in the one go, um, so it's just going to have to get halved in the middle, I'm just going to have to half it at the 20-30 minute mark and just upload the next part of it next week, um, so yeah, <laughs> so get ready for <clears throat> Sorry. So get ready for a four-part journey of my backpack trip through Southeast Asia. <laughs> so yeah, let's just get into it. Just like the tissue. Got that close. I went backpacking. Um, we left on the 29th of December 2019. And we came home on the 29th of February 2020. Um, so uh, me and my friend Kendall, um, I lived with her in Italy um, in 2018. Um, we had decided that we wanted to do something over the winter. Um, she didn't really know what she wanted to do and I knew I didn't want to be in Scotland. So we decided to go backpacking. So we started planning it throughout the summer, um, so I was saving my pennies um, and we'd been watching videos, um, mainly, our, I'll put our YouTube in, Backpacking Bananas, uh, if you don't watch her, go watch her. Used her a lot for inspo, also um, King in it, and then also just like other random videos and just like on research as well. Um, so, yeah. We... Yeah, so we we booked our flights during the summer, um, and then I'd just been saving and saving and saving uh, all the rest of the summer. Uh, and when I went home, um, I also like I'd sold my car in the de uh, December when I'd got home. So just before like we left, I'd sold my car and everything for some extra money. Um, I didn't have a proper. I only got a job for like a week, just over a week or something. Um, helping at a sales thing for some like just a little bit of extra cash. Um, after the summer season because I came home like at the very very end of October um, and I was meeting up with everybody from Italy uh, in Edinburgh for a weekend in November I was then also going up to, over to visit my dad in the start of December and then I was going backpacking so I, d I didn't really have enough time to take on a new job and I'd saved a lot um, so, and I was just going through my whole life because the original plan was to go backpack and be home for a few days and then go to France. So yeah, I sold my car, um, I sold some other things, um, I just like had a clear out. And then I left. So I left Scotland on the, I've got a trusty notebook with me. Um, I left Scotland on the 27th of December. And so I flew from Edinburgh down to Manchester um, to meet up with my friend. I um, stayed at hers for a couple of nights and then we, st we left on the 29th of December. So we started our long winded journey to the Philippines. Um, so our flight went from Manchester to Amsterdam 
Amsterdam to Taiwan, Taiwan to Manila, and that should have been the end of it. But we were starting our backpacking experience in Mualboal. Uh, so um, we then flew from Manila to Cebu. <laughs> so we done a lot of traveling. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we arrived um, in Cebu City for a night on the 30th of December. And we stayed in a little place called the Park Hill Hotel. So yeah, we were just there for the one night. Um, and then we had to get a bus. <laughs> uh, I can't remember how long the bus is. I should have looked that up. But um, we then got a bus from Cebu City down to Mobile. Uh, so that was on the 31st of December, New Year's Eve. So we arrived there and we stayed in the Mobile Backpacker Lodge. Um, that was that was a nice wee room. Uh, we got a we ended up just getting a private room there. Um, it was like a double bed. We just shared it. Um, but obviously since we had just like arrived, like obviously we'd done a long trip. We'd, like even though we'd stayed a night, like again we were then on a bus for a full day. So we thought you know what, we're probably better to try and uh, like have our, like a bit of our own space, and it was like the same price or cheaper. It was like yeah, you know I mean it didn't make a difference. Um, so yeah, we stayed there. Um, so yeah, we arrived on uh, New Year's Eve. So once we got in, we just uh, we went down, it was like right at the beach. So we went down to the beach, went snorkeling because uh, there's a big sardine wall there. Uh, this was my first time ever snorkeling. So it did take me a little while to get used to it. I was a bit freaked out because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't breathe through it, right? Like it's not natural to breathe through my mouth. So yeah, I kept like breathing the mask into my face um, and you know, I didn't have the the snorkel like tube bit, like I don't know what you call that, the breathing tube bit, um, positioned right. So I kept getting water in it and <laughs> so it was a bit of a fail, but you know, we live and we learn. So we went snorkeling um, and then we went out for New Year's Eve, which we were like, oh my God, we feel great. Like, not no jet lag at all, but I think we're lying to ourselves and like we felt fine. But I think obviously, I don't know if you all know, I mean, then you get to a point where you're overtired and like you don't feel tired. I think that's probably I think what happened because then we went out drinking, drank quite a lot. Uh, but usually, like obviously we'd spent like six months together in Italy, we'd been on other nights out. And like everyone was always fine, but no, our first first proper night in the Philippines, we lost each other. I think what happened, obviously, we drank, we were drinking a lot. It was New Year's Eve. We were excited. First time going backpacking, like excited to be in the Philippines. It looked amazing. I think it was just over tiredness. We just got it was just too much for the first night. Um, so first of January, then was a write off because we felt rough felt tired so we just had a chill day you know just was walking about and then like planned um our trips for the next day so on the 2nd of january we went canyoneering at kawasan falls um the company we went with was joe pro joe pro adventures i think um so we saw them through uh christian uh backpack and bananas um so we decided to go with them since we knew it was a good company to go with. Um, and they come and like you meet them at a pickup point and they drop you off there. Like you just walk up to it. Um, you, so you've got your transport, um, all your gear, like so like your uh, life jacket, your helmet, um, if you needed water shoes. Um, and you've got lockers to store your stuff in as well. Um, and obviously you had your guides and then also you got your dinner, lunch included. Um, so it was really good. Uh, Can You Urine was amazing. It was so much fun. Um, I do recommend that you know how to swim or you're at least comfortable being in water um, because there was a couple of girls on our trip that couldn't swim. And there is a couple of jumps that are, like the first jump is, like there's a couple of jumps that you like, you have to do um 
I think they managed to figure a way around it, but it looked very, very awkward. Um, and yeah, they ended up having to hold on to the guy's hand the whole time. I, it doesn't say mean to. That doesn't mean they didn't have a good time. I don't know. I don't know how they felt, but it just looked a bit awkward. And like you're not getting the full experience if you're not doing like the jumping and everything. Um, you're just walking through the canyon. But anyway, so the first jump starts at four meter meters, I think. That's that's the lowest jump. It's four meters, and then the highest one. You work your way up and it gets to 12 metres. Um, so I've done them all, bar the 12 metres. I've never really done, uh, I'd only ever done like cliff jumping, like a dive, like jumping once. Um, and I can't remember how tall it was. Um, but yeah, so that was my first time. I thought it was really, I thought it was really good fun. Um, yeah, done them all and it was fine. I was having a such a good time like there's a few that they're just small you stand back like you have your back to it and they like give you a high five like you, they say high five and like you just push it you've just got to let yourself fall and there's another one that you slide down backwards and then you like drop it it's just it's so good i'll put the videos in mm. Jumping, high five. Hello. Um, but yeah, uh, on the ten meter jump, um, that wasn't like the other. That wasn't like the normal ones. Like that were like off, like cliffy bits, like off rocks. This was like an actual platform and I didn't manage to save the the landing. So one, my, my friend's got a video of it. I don't think I've even got a video of it. I, think it, I don't think it's saved onto my phone. I'll have, to, I'll have to see. But I land really funny. It's like when I'm coming down, I've known to try and straighten my legs. I've got one leg straight and the other leg's not. So that's like out. So I ended up getting a really big bruise on like the bottom of my, like on the underneath of my thigh. It was so sore. It was stinging. Um, yeah, it wasn't good, but you know, nothing that dramatic happened. They told me obviously I didn't land very well. And I was like, I am very aware that I didn't land that very well. Um, so obviously for that reason, I wasn't going any higher. It's not something that I've done a lot, like uh, something that you need to get good technique at. I was like, I'm not jumping again. My legs are already sore, so I'm not risking landing funny. And if I can't control my fall from 10 metres, there's no point going another two metres higher to then possibly, because obviously jumping, you can really badly injure yourself if you do it wrong. Um, so I missed it. Um, so we just continued walking because again, all most of them were optional. There was only a couple that you had to do, like like the jumps that you kind of had to do. Um, and then we saw the platform, and hats off. There was like this. Um, there was an Australian family with us as well, and um, I don't, I can't remember how old the daughter was, but like the dad and the daughter went and done it, and the mum and the son didn't. The daughter, I can't think of how she was. She was young anyway, like. I don't know, she was only a teenager. And she done it, hats off to her, well done, um, because this thing looked terrifying. It was, it wasn't like on the top of a cliff, like like what all the other ones were. It was like a cliff that you had to get onto this like little platform, like ledge bit, and then jump off. And I went, oh no, I wouldn't be able, I, I saw it and went, oh no, I wouldn't be able to stand on that. Like you'd be freaking out, like, one missed place and you're falling. Um, so I, w I was glad that I missed that one. But yeah, it was really good. The food was really good that we got um, for our dinner as well. Like the whole thing, all the, the guys there, the guides, um, they were they were all really nice. Um, 
they were either really friendly and always made sure that you were like doing everything right and um, trying to calm you down and having a laugh with you. So if you ever go, I could not recommend them enough. Um, they were they were amazing. It was so good. Uh, so yeah, amazing. Um, so yeah, so after that, um, obviously we just went back and chilled. I don't have obviously an exact thing of everything we've done because it has now been a couple of years and I didn't take pictures of everything. Um, so I'm presuming that obviously we just went back, chilled out and had some food. We maybe sat at the beach or something, I don't know. Also, there was a little dog at the beach in uh, at Mobile that, um, oh, it was so cute. It was just this little stray dog and it kept coming and sitting on a towel and everything. It was well cute. There was a, there was there was a lot of stray dogs um in the Philippines that just kept being our friends. Um but anyway, so then the next day um we went scuba diving and this was my first experience scuba well my first proper experience scuba diving. Um I went to Turkey when I was about eight and I got to do the experience in a swimming pool and they said that I'd done well and I'd be able to go out on the dive the next day, but um, we flew home the next day. So I only ever done it in the swimming pool. And this was then now like, you know, over 10 years later. So I, I had no idea what was going on. Um, and we went with, um, we went, we booked it through a Amigo Dive Centre. And again, they were really good. Um, my instructor that I had with me, his name was Eric and he was amazing because I was too scared to let go of his hand. <laughs> he made me feel so safe. Um, it was so good, like, um, obviously, because where the beach was, you could just walk in, like, down in the shore. So we just went on my knees to try and do all the, like, take your mask off and uh, take, the, like, the breathing bit out and put it back in and do all that sort of stuff. Um, and the first couple of times I just stood up and kept taking my head out of the water like because I was like oh god this is just not natural um once I was done it and I went in and um, it was fine uh that yeah uh, he did let me go and uh, like I got quite a lot of good photos and stuff he let me go a few times but it made me it, it did make me very anxious um I, d I didn't like it <laughs> um because I kept I just kept floating away like I just um yeah, because uh, obviously, like, I'd done obviously a few dives after that I did start. I was, like, able to swim and control myself a lot better. But anyway, he did. He made me feel really safe. He like, always grabbed my hand when I wanted him to grab my hand. He just kept <laughs> just kept a hold of me. And, yeah, he was he was really nice. Um, So he was really good. Um, And there they've got the sardine walls, as I said. So we are just watching the sardines. It was really cool. Um, Then moving about, it was unreal. Um. So yeah, it was, it was really good. Yeah, we'd done that in the morning and then we chilled out for a wee bit and got, uh, we went through to White Beach, which is just, it was just like, I don't know, like 20 minutes up the road to another beach. Um, so we went up there for a bit, chilled out at another beach because that was like a proper beach, whereas like the beach, like where we were staying was like all like shells mainly. Um, they were different. Um, so yeah, and that was the end of that day. So 4th of January, that was us leaving Mobile. We'd done everything that we'd wanted to do. So we had to get the bus back from Mobile. I don't know why I keep mucking up saying it. Um, to Cebu City again. And we stayed in uh, Cebu City for a night. Um, I can't remember the name of the place that we stayed. Um, but yeah, so we stayed there for a night. And we flew to Camigan the next day. So January the 5th, we land in Camigan and we stayed at a place called Siena's Inn, um, which again was nice. It was like in a good location. Um, and we got there and we thought we would be hiring a scooter because you can't get around Camigan uh, without one, basically. Or you could hire, obviously, your own, like, drivers and stuff. But there was just the two of us, so we thought, you know, scooter would probably be good. We can make up our own plan. Um, and the guy came, and none of us had driven on a scooter before. And he was like, no, I'm, I'm not giving it to somebody 
that doesn't know how because Camigan's very, very hilly. Um, you need to know how to control it. So I was like, okay, like we're debating what to do, whether it's try and get somebody else. But the guy saying that I did, it really put me off. I was like, you know what, I, I would rather pay extra and get a driver because I, I don't want to be stupid and end up mucking up if we've ever driven something like this. And thank the Lord we did because see some of the emails that we experienced. Oh my days, it was horrific. Um, we'll get there, but yeah, it was bad. Um, so yeah, so we got the hotel to phone somebody for us. I saw a wee man called Edmar came and picked us up. We expected him to have like a little, uh, like they had, I don't know what they would call him. And a lot of people call him like a tuk tuk or something. I don't know if that's what they would call him over there. But I mean, it was a scooter with like a shelter attached to it. This is what we were expecting because that's what we've been getting everywhere else. And there was two of us. But no, this wee dude rocked up with just a scooter. So the three of us were on this scooter. Hi mom, we just want you to know. <laughs> driving about and see you start off this even I saw it me and Ken were like oh my god like I don't <laughs> I don't know if I'm comfortable with this we're like I mean, no the two of us can't get on this guy's scooter like we just can't but we did and oh my god I didn't like it to start off it like I was gripping that guy like oh my god um and you know we were very cozy like I was right up against him Kendall was right up against me I was in the middle of the sandwich um Kendall was like hanging off the back of it. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was an experience. Um, well, so once we've been on it for a while, we got, got used to it. Um, so he ended up being our driver for the few days that we were there. We ended up just booking him for the whole time. Uh, so, yeah, so that first night we got him and we went a walk up the old volcano um, for sunset, which was really nice. Um, it was also roasting, so it was. I struggled to walk up but yeah so that's that's all we've done that night uh, so then as I said we'd booked Edmar he came the next day and we had a busy day so he took us to the port for us to go to White Island for a few hours so right off the coast of Camigan there is an island called White Island and it's literally just a sandbar in the sea there's all it's just sand just a little sand island nothing else there um, so all there is to do is sunbathe and snorkel. There's no trees or anything, so it is a total sun trap. Um, so we went early in the morning before it got too busy um, and before it got too hot because you would burn <laughs> and I would probably die. Um, so, yeah, so we spent a couple of hours at White Island just, you know, snorkeling and we walk, just chilled out. Um, and then mostly we got off, Edmar was waiting on us and we went then to the Sunken Cemetery, um, which was a snorkeling tour, which was really cool. Um, but it was um, really, um, it was really shallow the day we went. Um, so the guy kept telling us like, remember, be very careful on all the corals because like there wasn't a lot of space between how tall the corals were and like your belly because, um, like the tide was out, like it was, yeah, it was shallow. Um, so I was panicking a wee bit a few times. I was so sucking in, like, oh God. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. There was loads of corals, loads of fish, um, and the things to see, it was, it was really good. Um, so then after that, we went and visited the old Spanish uh, church ruins which was just like a random stop we hadn't asked to go there Edmar just stopped and told us about going in and looking at it so we're like right yeah okay we like, will do um because like we'd taken his obviously like he had told us a few things so we went and done that um and there was this big tree there uh and it was too funny um yeah I, I can't remember the tree was massive I can't remember how old it was but it was pretty impressive and um the guy that worked there or this guy there was like um you want to get a picture with it and we're like right yeah okay so we stood in front of it and he had the phone sideways and like had it down and was going Woof. 
like all the way up and we were stood there like what the hell is this guy doing we're like no i fought my phone he's like yes 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 and he was like yeah and he just kept doing it and we're like what what, what is he what is he doing and we're like oh my god like what the hell are these going to look like no this guy's a genius um so all these people talk about putting the pan panorama the other way around now this guy done this years ago and we were all like we were watching him like what is this guy doing but I, he'd done the panel so uh, the other way so we could get the full tree in it. So well done, because he knew a photo technique that none of us knew. Um, so yeah, he's got a cool picture in front of this big, massive tree there. <laughs> so then, um, and then we went to... To Sand Falls? To Sand Falls, I'm going to say it like that. I can't remember how you pronounce these things. Um, which was a, mostly a waterfall. Um... It was really nice. We were swimming in there for quite a while. It was a really nice bit to, uh, to swim at. Um, yeah, it was. That was a really nice waterfall. Um, it was really pretty, and it was really, yeah, it was really relaxing. There was loads of people around, and there wasn't really that many people in the water as well, which was weird. But we just loved being in the water. Um, and then after that, we finished off the day by going to the Ardent Hot Springs. Um, we didn't spend very long there. But uh, again, it was it was really nice. Um, I'd never been to anything like that before, so yeah, it was nice. Um, and then we went home and had something to eat. So the next day, Edmar came and got us, and we headed uh, to the other side of the island and went to went to the port where we could get the boat over to Mantega Island. Um, so again, this is just it's just a little island off the coast of Camigan. Um, it is bigger than White Island um, because it's an actual island, it's got trees, it's got a couple of restaurants so you can actually like sit and eat and like do some things there um, but again it's mainly just it's like snorkeling around it um, but again it was, it was a really nice island, we'd walked around the whole thing and we'd sat and had some food and stuff um, again we went early in the morning and just spent a couple of hours there and then obviously got the boat back and got picked up and so um, then we went to Kati Bawasan Falls. So another waterfall. Um, again, it was really nice. It was uh, really impressive. A very strong waterfall. Um, very tall as well. Um, and there's a story for this one. So to get to this one, we had to go up a very steep hill. Now this is the part where, like, knowing Camigan's roads and how to handle a scooter is ideal because we would have just started heading up this road and probably would have failed. Um, because uh, the scooter wouldn't have taken, uh, the scooter couldn't take all three of us up because the bottom of it was so steep. So what he had to do was he dropped Kendall down at the bottom, he, left, he ditched her at the bottom, drove me halfway to the top, dropped me off, ditched me to go get Kendall and bring her up for me to jump back on to make our way up the rest of the hill. So story time. The hill to one of the waterfalls is so steep we had to ditch Kendall at the bottom of the hill. Um and me and the guy just come up and now I've been ditched halfway to the top <laughs> while he brings Kendall up. So just standing in what appears to be like a middle of a jungle type thing. <laughs> By myself just waiting my little driver again so we can finish going up this hill hopefully like nobody's hiding in the woods and takes me you know kidnaps in the jungle in the philippines it's way to go peace it was mental we didn't know what he was talking about at first he was telling like was like somebody's gonna have to get off but um didn't speak great english um he was so nice but yeah, like, at this point, we're like, what is he, <laughs> what's he talking about? We have to get off. So, yeah, that was that was an experience. I was just like, okay. Um, so, that was funny. Um, so, yeah, we went to the waterfall and we'd also went to uh, the giant clam sanctuary, which was a suggestion by Edmar. And, again, you go out snorkelling and, as it sounds, you see giant clams. Um, so yeah, 
I don't have any pictures there. But when I looked at the maps, it would make more sense if I went there before I went to Catabao Sand Falls. But I don't know. I can't remember because I don't have the pictures. But again, so going there, it was so steep going, again, the road was so steep. The scooter wouldn't take anybody's weight. Well, it would take his weight, but it would only take one person's weight to get up the hill. So me and Kendall, he was, he told us like he'd, we would have to walk. So we went snorkeling, like we went swimming and stuff. And then he, he drove up the hill and we were walking up this steep ass hill, dying. Like, what the hell is going on here? Um, so yeah. So yeah, the roads in Camigan are mental. Um, but yeah, so that that's how what we've done. That's how we finished our day. I think that's the day we went to this random restaurant somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then the next day, we left Camigan and flew to Puerto Princesa, um, which is the island of Palawan. And we stayed in the city for the one night. And so the following day, which was now be the 9th, of January, we made our way to Port Barton, um, where we stayed in the My Green Hostel. Um, so we got there and again, didn't really do much. We just went for a wee walk, um, seen what was around us, and then just had a couple of drinks in the hostel that night. And then the next day, we went on a trip to White Beach, which was stunning. It was so chill. Port Barton was amazing. Um, because obviously we're about halfway through the trip at this point. We'd obviously had quite a few busy days at Camigan. And it's so chill at Port Barton. Like, that's where everyone goes to just relax. Um, So, yeah, White Beach was stunning. It had puppies there, which was amazing. Um, And it had a little restaurant as well. Um, So we'd, there was hammocks. So we'd went and sat on a hammock for a wee while. Then we went and sat up and got some food. I got pork adobo, which turned out to be, like, my most favourite food ever. I got it like all the time when I was in the Philippines. Um, and yeah, we cuddled some puppies. And there was also a swing um, that somebody had made, like a tree swing. So we got some cute pics on that. Well, I did. Kind of not so much, because I'm not great at taking photos. <laughs> uh, so yeah, too funny. So yeah, we just stayed there um, and just chilled out there. Got like the boat. We done like a boat trip over and then we went like went back and that was about it. Um so yeah, we just had a couple of chill days there and then the next day we travelled to El Nido where things went a bit wrong. Um we'd only intended to stay in El Nido for a couple of days and we ended up having to extend our stay by a couple of days because we ended up being unwell. So yeah. So I'm gonna wrap up this video here. I hope you've enjoyed and um, please like and subscribe to my channel um, I will be linking my Instagram and everything below so if you maybe want to go check them out that would be great as well um, and yeah I'll see you for the next video bye